Okay, what's going on everybody? Uh, welcome to another YouTube video of mine. This video is going to be on uh, SPI with uh, this 12-bit uh, ADC. This is the MCP3202 uh, from Microchip. I chose this because I wanted to learn about SPI and uh, this had good documentation. And so before I get into the code, I wanted to go over a couple things in this data sheet. Um, obviously one of the most important things is the pinout right here. Uh, next page. This is cool. Um, well, sort of cool. Look at this throughput rate parameter. The amount of samples. So you can either have 50 kilosamples per second or 100 kilosamples per second. That depends on your VDD uh, or your reference voltage. So at 2.7 volts, you can get a maximum of 50 kilosamples per second. I was running 3.3 volt logic off my FPGA. So I didn't want to max it out, so I just ch I just went for about 40 kilosamples per second, and it turned out to be a little less than like 39. But just pay attention to that when you're uh, doing this. If we go all the way down, we can look at the uh, spy command. So this are this are the timing. This is the timing diagram. The two parameters that we need to pay attention to are this T S U C S and the TCSH, those are parameters in the data sheet. Um, you can look at them in the above pages. I believe this one right here is 500 nanoseconds, and that's the amount of time the chip select has to remain high for. And then this one, I believe, is 100 nanoseconds. I could be wrong about that. Don't quote me on it. <laughs> but just make sure that you have those in your design. Uh, chip select, clock, this is talking about the spy clock. This data in is the data coming into the ADC, and since I configured the ADC as the slave, that's going to be the MOSI line, the master out, slave in. And then this D out, that's the data coming out of the ADC, so that's going to be the MESO line, the master in, slave out. And to start the... Um, to start the, the sample, we need to first configure it. So if we look at the MOSI line, we have the start bit. So the start bit's high, then we have this next bit, which is SGL slash differential. And that stands for, if we go up to this table, single-ended or differential mode. I wanted to go in single-ended mode, so I set this bit to one. Next bit, I had the odd slash sign bit, and that bit is for channel selection. Uh, if you're in differential mode, it's something else, but in single-ended mode, it's for channel selection. So I set it to one, so this plus sign shows that channel one is going to be my input. Then the next bit is the MSBF, that stands for most significant bit first, and that's the mode that I wanted to do. If you go to the next slide, this is the LSB first. Um, however, I chose to do the MSBF first, so that was obviously high, and that was the end of the MOSI line. Then, one important thing to note about the meso line is that the um, the sample starts with a null bit, um, so just pay attention to that. Even though there is 13 bits here, the first one is just it's just a null bit. So let's get into the code. So if we go over here, um, I modeled it as a state machine. I have my inputs and outputs, blah blah blah, local parameters. Start bit is high, the single is high because I send it to single end in mode, we just talked about this. The odd bit is set to one because I wanted channel one, and then MSBF set to one because I wanted most significant bit first. These are my states, I have the initialized state. This, this initialized state is more for me actually. Uh, it's just helping me with some simulation stuff. I'm new to Verilog, so it, it just helps me. Um, you can take it out if you want to. Then I have this disable, that's when the chip select is high because it's active low. Uh, transmitting, that is when the master is transmitting to the slave. Then we have receiving, that's when the slave is transmitting to the master. So we have the meso here and then the transmitting is the mozi line. A uh, couple registers and then we get to, you can read through the comments to see what those are. We get to this sample counter and this one's actually pretty important so I'm going to talk about this for a bit. This sample counter is basically the amount of time that it takes to complete one sample with the parameters that I chose. So down here I have my spy clock. Um, it's just a 50% duty cycle PWM. 
Um, it's running at about, oh man, I can't remember, maybe it's 70 kilohertz, something like that. So faster than uh, the, the, the maximum sample the maximum sample rate of 50 kilo samples per second, obviously, because there's going to be multiple spike clock periods per sample. But this sample counter, so I have the spike clock, and then if we go look back at the timing diagram, we have these two parameters, and I didn't do the minimum values. I did like, I think, double sometimes of the minimum values. So I think I did a thousand nanoseconds for this, for this uh, TCSH, even though the minimum is 500 nanoseconds. But uh, I didn't want to do anything bad. I just wanted it to work. So that's where this number comes from, this 3116. So the counter is going to count up to 3117. It's going to count from 0 to 3117, resulting in 3,118 counts. And each of those counts is on the positive edge of the clock. So each count takes one clock cycle. So if each clock cycle for my clock, since the system clock is a 125 megahertz clock, that's an 8 nanosecond period. So if you do 8 nanoseconds times 3,118, you'd get about 39 or 40 kilohertz, or 39 or 40 kilosamples per second. And this sample counter basically just keeps track of where I am in the state machine and what what needs to happen if the Mosey line is high or the Mesa line is activated. So that is what that's for. So like I said, this is just the spy clock and we get into the state machine. This initialized state you can take out just makes it wait a whole sampling period to set up. It's just, that's just for me. You can take it out if you want to. And we get into this disable state. So in disable, since the chip select is active high, or active low, I mean, sorry, the chip select is high here, so it's disabled, the chip is disabled. Um, it waits 1,000 nanoseconds, so it says take check TCSH in the data sheet. Okay, so yeah, so it was set to, this one right here is set to 1,000 nanoseconds to make sure that it meets the minimum per timing timing parameters. And then begin, then it changes the state to the transmitting state, chip select goes low and the SCK, which is the spy clock enable, is high and the MOSI sends the start bit, which is high because it wants to start the uh, transmission. Else the state stays in disable, blah, blah, blah. So then we get into the transmitting state, chip select is pulled low, this, these were all set from the past, mo from the past state. Then depending on where the uh, the spy clock is so the spy clock takes 176 counts to complete one cycle and since we're sending one bit per, per cycle it just waits and says okay for this 176 counts send the single parameter and that was set up in the local parameters that's a high because I set it to single ended wait another 176 counts then send the odd bit and the odd bit set to one because I want a channel output of one Keeps going down, changes the state to receiving if the sample counter is high. So see, this is the sample counter going through, keeping track of where we are. And that ends the transmitting state. And then let's go into the receiving state. Okay, so in the receiving state, this is going to be the, uh, the meso. Chip select is still low, the clock enable is still high, and the MOSI in this case is don't care. If you look at the, go back to the timing diagram, see the MOSI's don't care, so I just set it to one, doesn't matter. Again, it goes off of the sample counter and uh, counts for the 176 counts, which is one period of the spy clock, because we're sending one bit per spy clock period, but important here, it's going to wait one and a half spy clock cycles because we want to sample in the middle of that uh, of that high period of the spy clock and uh, you'll know that if you're familiar with SPI you want to sample in the middle because that's going to be the most um, reliable point so it waits 1.5 not just one to, to start sending the data then it says okay load this into the bit 11 which is the most significant bit 
of the register, the data register. The data register will eventually be output to um, a 12-bit word. So the first bit that comes in from the Miso, load that into the 11th bit of the data register. Data valid, is, it, the data, val data is not valid right now since we've only loaded one bit. Wait another 176 counts, another one period of the clock, uh, spy clock. We're in the middle of the next high section. So load whatever's in the meso line to the 10th bit in the data register. Well, the 10th, the 11th bit, but the the 10th, the, the bit with the number 10 in the vector. You get, you get, you get what I'm saying. So it keeps going down, keeps doing this, loads all the bits into the data register. Data is the the data valid register is low all the way down until we fill it up. So see here, we fill up the data register with the last bit, and then the data is high. So data valid register data valid is high because the data is now valid. The sample counter uh, is going to go back and flip over and flips into the disable state. So then the cycle repeats and down here I default, the default state is the initialized state. You can make it the disable if you want to. And then I assign all my internal signals to be external signals. So data valid, yeah, all that stuff. So yep, um, let's take a quick look at the test bench that I have set up here. So I got all my stuff right here. Um, these two, Comments, you can uncomment them if you're going to be using EDA Playground. I'm going to include a link to my EDA Playground uh, simulation for this because you'll probably want to see that. Uh, just make sure you uncomment them before you run it. Um, the first MISO word that we're going to be transmitting, what we want to see ideally is that the data, the 12-bit data word is going to be in hex, it's going to be D73 um, or it's going to be this in binary. Automatically, the EDA playground shows up in hex, so we'll probably just view it in hex. The second word is going to be just hex three. So we go through here, we set our things, blah, blah, blah. This amount of time, this is the initialize and disable time, so it's just going to wait. What the test bench is simulating, it's simulating the actual ADC sending things in from that meso line. So it's just going to wait that amount of time, and then we can see in the simulation if the FPGA is sending the right MOSI data, then this simulates the ADC sending the MISO data after that. So it waits 1,408 nanoseconds, notice in the time scale, and that 1,408 nanoseconds, that's actually equal to one spy clock cycle in nanoseconds. The spy clock cycle is 176 counts. If we notice up here, my clock is flipping every four nanoseconds, so the period is eight nanoseconds, four times two. So eight nanoseconds times 176 counts, that's going to give us this 1,408 nanosecond time amount. So that's where I got that from. Blah, blah, blah. It just changes the meso line per um, spy clock cycle, keeps going down, and then loads the word. Waits another little bit and then transmits the uh, the next word. So let's take a look at what that looks like. I have it here again. I will put this link in the video description. You're just going to have to click run. And then I've already done that. So I'm going to open up this EP wave. I'm going to zoom in because we don't really need to see that. And this is the full simulation. Uh, spy clock, Mosey, Meso, data valid. Uh, chip select, so chip select goes low. This is when the chip's active. You can take a look at this. What I wanted to take a look at a little closer is uh, this guy right here. So I'm going to start this slideshow from the beginning. And this is just the, the meso, the spy clock, and the output data. So this is when this is when the meso is con being converted into the data word. So I wanted to look at that. And what we wanted to do was look at in the middle of the high point of the spy clock, that's when we're sampling our data. So first we have this line. So right in the middle of that high period and the meso is high, except for that's the null bit, so it doesn't matter. This next bit, this is the most significant bit. 
that is a 1. Next, we look at the, the next high point in the middle of it. That's also a 1. And we keep going down the line until we get to the last bit, the least significant bit, and that is a 1. And that we see the transmitted word we can read off is that in binary or hex D73. Oh, look, that's what's on the data line after that. And that is, so if we had other signals listed on this, the data would now be valid. Chip select would go high for the specified amount of time. And so, yeah. Okay, I'm not sure if you can super see this well, um, but what I did here, this that we're in Vivado right now, and I made this little top module, and it includes these other two outputs, LED blue and LED green. And what it's going to do is read the the data, the 12-bit word. That's an input to this module. Okay, it's going to read that's that's coming out of the spy module and into this module. And it says, okay, if the data is less than or equal to this 12-bit word, which is in decimal 2,400, 2,048, which is half, or it's about half of 4,095, which is a full 12-bit uh, word with all ones in it, that's going to be the maximum amount that the ADC can give. If it's less than half of the 4,095, then the green light is on. Uh, but if it's greater than that, if the sample is greater than that, then it's going to be blue high. So what does this mean in the actual analog world? Well, if the sample, if the digital word is half of what it can be fully, then the analog sample is going to be half of what it can be fully. So if the reference voltage, like I said, is 3.3 volts, then that halfway mark would be about 1.65 volts. So if it's less than or equal to 1.65 volts, we're going to see that green light turn on. And if it's greater than that, we'll see that blue light turn on. This is just a real world, real world test that I uh, did to see if this actually works. So I put it into a bitstream and let's see how it goes. Okay, so what I have here is my FPGA board connected up to the ADC. The ADC is sampling this pull down resistor, uh, the value of which is 10 k kilo ohms. The voltage is supplied by the analog discovery two. So currently it's sitting at one volt. The light is green because that's less than half. Uh, it's less than the 1.65 volts. If I raise that to two volts, so greater than half, the blue light should come on. We can just go 2.5 volts. Boom, blue light is on. Thank you for watching. <laughs>